Hey folks, it's Josh. Uh, I'm going to take the next few minutes to talk about how I go about setting up an acoustic guitar path. Um, some of the blocks that I use to get a really nice sounding acoustic tone from my Helix. So the first thing you want to do is I have this empty. You want to go into your input path. I like to turn my input gate on and go to um, actually pretty low. It doesn't need to be too high, otherwise it's going to end up giving you kind of a weird sound. So somewhere in like negative 75, negative 76, anywhere between negative 80 and negative 70 is going to be um, pretty good. And that just is going to cut off some of the, with acoustic guitars, they can actually resonate depending on the stage setup and stuff like that. This is just kind of like a fail, fail safe for me personally. I found that it works. I like the way it sounds. So um, that's pretty much it. The input gain. It's helpful. Check it out. You can use that instead of um, going in here and adding its own block. They have this as a noise gate. Um, you don't need that. You can actually just use the one that's right there on the input block. Um, next, a lot like our electric guitar path, we're going to use a, a, a mic preamp. And it can be difficult to find at first. You need to go into the preamp. And then on HX Edit, it's here, this tab right here. You bring this down and you hit mic. There's only one that you can use. So it goes right in there. That's going to be our preamp. Um, so here's how it sounds. Also, when uh, creating the acoustic one specifically, I use headphones because the acoustics of the physical guitar um, can sometimes get in the way of what I'm what I think I'm hearing through speakers. So headphones help with that. It's not absolutely necessary um, for you to use, but I found that it helps me when I'm creating these presets. So um, we're going to go in and bring this level. The way I like to do this um, is kind of, the gain is where it gets tricky because you can actually start distorting your signal pretty bad. So I'll show you first thing out at the gate. This is full gain. It's going to be distorted and kind of gross. Very loud and obviously not usable. Um, so we want the level. This is our overall level. I usually bring that down, but keep it very high, like 9.2, 9.3. And I kind of use the gain to where it's very clean. There's no distortion at all, but we still get that. That's pretty good. We're going to put a compressor in front of it, and I know that's going to bring it up a little bit. But we're not going to worry too much about that. This is a decent spot for it. So what I'm listening for is um, basically just a nice clean signal and no distortion, but loud enough is what I'm going for with the gain. It's going to be different from your guitar with your pickups, so I encourage you to just use your ears and... Um, just go for the clean sound, no distortion. If it starts distorting, back it off, you know, ever so slightly until you don't hear any distortion anymore. Um, next thing in here is going to be the high cut and the low cut. Low cut, we can bring this up just like our acoustic guitar. Um, we're going to bring it up to around 100. It's a safe bet. And then high cut, we bring that down to something like 10. Okay. Um, kind of gets rid of that, like gross sounding high end that a lot of people don't like. I personally don't like it. So let's go on now. Here's our sound. Right, just kind of basic acoustic guitar sound. Um, so we're gonna put a compressor on next, our deluxe comp, mono. I'm gonna do a six to one, a later attack. 60 is fine, and then release it. 200 is fine, mix it 100 is fine. And then again, we're gonna work this threshold the same way that we did with our electric guitar. I bring it all the way down. You have the super squash sound. And then we bring this, our threshold to a much more usable level. These are active pickups, so they're a little louder than our electric guitar. So the threshold is technically higher. There we go. That's pretty good.
pretty good. Um, sounds nice and clean. Even now, after that, we are not going to use any distortion for this. You can put the delay there if you'd like. I usually put it after the preamp. Um, so that can stay there, or you can move it closer if you'd like. doesn't really matter. Let's do a really quick delay. I like to use the vintage digital. Um, we can Stereo sounds good. If you have the option to go stereo at your church, then there's no reason not to, really. It sounds better, in my opinion, but more often than not, they only have one acoustic guitar channel, so it's a pretty safe bet that it's going to be mono, so we're going to be setting up a mono preset. I like the vintage di digital because um, of this right here, our bit depth. We can bring that up to 24, but the sample rate, we're going to bring it down as low as it goes to 8 kilohertz. What this does is it keeps the delays very dark. So here's the... Right, so when the sample rate is up high, it kind of sounds more like a digital. Um, and I don't really want that for this specifically, so I keep that low. You could do it here. That's kind of an in-between, but I want it like pretty dark. Um, we're gonna do quarter notes are fine. Feedback I think is okay, but the mix is a little loud. We want it pretty low, because a lot of times acoustic guitar is gonna be rhythmic. And we're not using the delay as like uh, uh, like a dotted eighth effect or anything. We're just kind of using it to, f to fill space, to add depth to the guitar and the tone overall. A lot like what we do with reverb, which we're gonna do next. I'll show you one of my favorite reverbs. It's a more recent one. So if you don't have, if you haven't updated to 3.15, then you probably won't have it. It's a dynamic hall reverb. It sounds pretty good. And the only problem is it's kind of got a long decay. I usually bring that down to like one point, anywhere between 1.7 and 1.9, something like that. It's very subtle. Mixes a uh, 39% standard. Yeah, I don't. You don't really need to touch anything else. It sounds pretty good on its own. So. pretty good some other things I might add in there let's do a really quick EQ uh, we're gonna do it after the preamp and before the delay you could do you could do a shelf um, we're gonna do parametric real quick so basically my goal here, I'm going to cut some of the lows right here is going to be fine. We're not going to do a whole lot. Nothing more than 3 dB for almost any of these. So we cut the lows. Um, we're going to cut right around 1K. And then we're going to boost our highs to give us some of that chime. But again, not by much. And it kind of sounds like I'm getting a little more distortion. I think that's from the compressor putting more level into it. So we can bring it down just a touch and bring this up to compensate. Sounds good. And then the very last thing that we can add is just a studio comp. You don't need 
need this at all, but it is a popular block to have last in your chain to kind of level everything out, um, like with your delays and your reverb. Um, but we don't need that much peak reduction. sounds pretty cool and again you can go in and add um, foot switches like if you want to turn on and off the delay or the reverb but um, the other ones like the two compressors and the EQ are pretty much an always on type of thing the preamp as well um, but yeah that to me sounds like a really good starting place for an acoustic guitar and again please take these numbers that I'm presenting with kind of a grain of salt they're just a starting place for you because every guitar it's going to sound different. It's going to output different levels. And um, you really should take the time to learn what, how your guitar reacts specifically. But if you like the way that this sounds, then this is a good template for you to try and achieve this. Personally, these are the blocks that I'm using to do it. So I hope this helps some of you guys. Thanks so much for watching.